The other different aspect of this is actually the, the response times. So with perineural injection therapy, because we are basically having an anti-inflammatory approach to the nerves, what we see is that patients will generally feel better immediately after the treatment. And so it's pretty common for me in my practice that I will do my testing, figure out, okay, I think this is a nerve issue, and then uh, we'll treat that nerve and immediately after the treatment, so within kind of two, three minutes, um, I'm retesting those things that were painful before and uh, helping to use that to kind of guide me to say, was this effective? Was I down the right path? And generally what we see um, is because of my screening process and my selection process for who should get these injections is that we see the, those painful exams are no longer painful, showing me that we've addressed some of that neurogenic inflammation. And so what we see is we see a big positive response and then over time, um, that can wear off because the neurogenic inflammation uh, can kind of creep back up and, and kind of build again. And so when we compound treatments over time, what we see is a, uh, a slow reduction over these multiple treatments until uh, we can get the pain to resolve. Now that's different than prolotherapy. Prolotherapy, generally what's gonna happen is most people are gonna be a little bit sore for a few days afterwards because we've gone in and we've injected a little bit of a more tender area uh, being the anthesis. And because we are re-stimulating a new healing response that has to go through the inflammatory cascade, that healing, what generally happens is we get a little bit worse and then we have this slow climb of getting better that with prolotherapy uh, generally takes anywhere from three to eight weeks with usually the average being about four to six weeks. And then what'll happen is at some point a patient will plateau in their healing and if they wait long enough, they'll either stay that way or they might have a slight regression. But then when we retreat, we can continue to compound on that. So that way we uh, can see some longer term benefits. Um, so while both of these solutions use dextrose and a needle, there's a big difference between perineural injection therapy and prolotherapy. And it's important to understand those differences because understanding those differences allows um, the, the doctor and the patient to make better judgment calls on which therapies uh, might be most indicated. Uh, I hope that helped uh, give you guys some clarity on the differences between these uh, two therapies. And uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. See you later. Oh,